I mean, you know, really stop and think about why we're here. Uh, my family, you know, my great grandparents had the um, started New Prague with the one corner store there, and they needed the farmers, and the farmers needed them. We need each other. It's not city, suburb, or farm. Democratic Visions is handmade in Eden Prairie and Minnetonka by DFL Senate District 42. Mayor R.T. Ryback recently let the cat out of the bag and declared that he was running for governor. Welcome, Mayor. Good to be here and good to see you again. Why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, what, your, what your goals were as mayor and what you think you accomplished during that time frame? Uh, I walked into uh, not only a city in debt, but a city where there are seriously fractious politics. I'm not saying everybody's throwing rose petals at my feet, mm -hmm. but I am saying we brought people together and we've gotten a lot done. I first off uh, laid out the, the budget and the truth to everyone and said we have some troubles here, so we're going to lay out a long-term plan. We focused on public safety and crime is now down double digits three years in a row and that's led by a decrease of juvenile crime of 40%. The city is much safer. We said we'd focus on jobs and uh, back then the unemployment rate in the city was 1% higher than the suburbs and today that gap is gone and we've created thousands of jobs and put thousands of people through our training programs. Uh, we said we'd focus on transportation and the environment and so not only the light rail uh, that we're working on to St. Paul and now out to Eden Prairie, which would be great, but putting transit into the cross town and the 35W projects. We've done an awful lot for our kids. We, uh, I'm especially proud of something called the Minneapolis Promise, where we put career centers in every high school and then got our kids working in a program called Step Up. 2,300 kids were working last summer, and then we got college access programs. Do you have some private financing that's uh, helping to uh, fund the uh, programs that you have in the schools? All of those things I just talked about, that Minneapolis promise, they're all privately funded. Really? And I went to the biggest businesses around. Knock and on said, the door and uh, twist their arm, is that how that works? Well, you know, it's, it's good when you can ask people to do something with your heart and your head. You yeah. know, do this to be compassionate, but I also said, Look, the kids in our schools now speak 80 languages. They come from all over the world, or they're used to sitting next to someone who is. These kids have much more global reach. And every business in Minnesota is competing in a global economy. So get these kids into the workforce. They're going to be paying our Social Security. And uh, so these business leaders, uh, led by Richard Davis, the CEO of U.S. Bank, okay. uh, they've just been terrific. And uh, Ken Powell over at General Mills. Uh, people have really stepped up and done that. And I want to do that in Minnesota. I really want us to, to say that um, when we really look at where we have to go in this state, we're going to move a few jobs in here, but mostly we're going to grow them. We're a brain power state. Well, you know, there, there's little doubt but that uh, you are in the absolute top tier of, uh, of candidates for governor. But I suppose the question uh, that has to be raised is why anyone would want to be governor facing the, uh, with the state facing the financial crisis right. that it's presently involved in. Well, this, the state is facing a financial crisis, and you do have reason to question the sanity of anyone who would seek the job. But that's exactly what people said to me when I walked into Minneapolis. Deep debt, <clears throat> bonds had been devalued, there were crime issues, it was after 9-11, and people said, why would anyone want to be mayor of this city? It can't be governed. Uh, I don't mind a challenge at all. I do mind mediocrity, and I was born in a great state, and I don't want to die in a mediocre one. And I think we should raise the bar. Better schools, better jobs, greater opportunities, better transportation, cleaner environment. These aren't things that we should hope for. We should expect them in Minnesota. We should raise our expectations. Have you had a chance to uh, think through the uh, recent uh, proposal of Governor Pawlenty that the state uh, modify its constitution so as to limit spending to the amount raised within the last two years of every biennium? Well, you know, I think it's a wonderful political gimmick for a guy who wants to run for president and not be governor. But let's get honest about this. The proposal Governor Pawlenty laid out is something not one of his budgets has ever followed. I think he's off by $7 billion, yeah. isn't he, if you add up all his budgets? Yeah. During the time Tim Pawlenty and I have been in office, state spending has gone up 12 percent, while city spending went up 1 percent. I've paid down $117 million in debt. He's built up debt that our children will have to be dealing with for years. I fixed a long-term fiscal crisis. He's created one. Now, I'm not running against Tim Pawlenty, but I do think we all have to run against the idea that somehow people are so stupid that they can be hoodwinked by gimmicks. People are smart, and the thing that I've done is laid out budgets honestly with people and said, this isn't easy. There are no gimmicks here. Let's do what we do in our families. We're going to pay off the credit card. We're going to be honest about what we do. We're going to live within our means. Unfortunately, the way it's been happening at the Capitol is we haven't lived within our means and we haven't fixed the problem. And 
the problems have been shifted onto local communities, which has risen the property tax burden for cities and made it harder for our schools. We've got to be real about the fact that we need good, strong fiscal leadership. I think I've shown I've done that. And we need visionary politics. And I think I've shown that, too. We need both right now. What, what are you, uh, what's your response to those who might uh, view you as an urban candidate for governor? Well, I think those people probably don't know that I helped set up the Regional Council of Mayors. It brought uh, mayors of uh, not only Eden Prairie and Edina and Bloomington together, but about 40 of us together to work on regional issues. That's why 35W is being redone. That's why we've been able to do some really groundbreaking things on housing and the environment together as regional mayors. Uh, they probably haven't seen uh, the work that I've done on uh, access to uh, schools that has helped our kids, but also kids from other places. They probably don't know that um, I have spent a good part of my career as a reporter covering the suburbs. And uh, I've spent a lot of work uh, in the city, no doubt, but I've also, a lot of that work has impacted this whole region. I think right now we are in uh, serious shape in this state and we desperately need new leadership. And uh, what I feel is that we should uh, pick a candidate together, uh, have everyone go to the caucuses, do the best we can, but then abide by that and go out and hopefully not only win an election, but change a state. Well, should you be the uh, uh, nominee of the party, you will be in a primary from, by all intents mm -hmm. and purposes. Does that to give you any pause for thought? Well, it makes me pretty excited because I love to campaign. I, uh, I got elected the mayor of the largest city in the state as a virtual unknown, uh, in large part because I walked out and shook hands with people and did what I did as a reporter, which is listened, and then uh, stood up and told the story of what we needed to do. But you know, one of the most important things a governor has to do is you have to lay out a vision that inspires people, you have to manage the budget, and you have to get results. Qu so, uh, quite the opposite from what we've been experiencing in the last <laughs> six years, I would say. I would say that. And uh, one thing that I, I like to do is we've gotten a lot done in City Hall, but I frankly, I think, gotten even more done by going out in the community and bringing people together. That's what a governor should be doing. As, as mayor, have you had occasion to work with the legislature? Oh, quite a bit, quite a bit. There have been times when I've had to work in crisis with the legislature. Certainly the, um, the bridge collapse was one. I worked very hard uh, on uh, passing transportation legislation, um, have worked on a number of different issues, and there's some fantastic people at the legislature. Uh, you know, Maria Root is coming on later in the show. I've known since she first got elected, and wow, is she great. You know, it's interesting that I think as you cross the state, city, suburbs, small towns, anywhere in the state, there's a pretty common goal of, of something that I think is pretty straightforward. They want to create better jobs and opportunity. They want us to help our kids. They want us to solve this health care issue and they, they really want us to figure out some way to get the budget under control. They may, they may say that about the budget, they may talk about their property taxes, but they really want sane fiscal leadership at the state. I think all of that is achievable. Is there any particular part of your message that you think will resonate uh, uh, well with uh, people out here in the suburbs? I think especially with schools. Uh, I've spent a lot of time um, long in the back of the room as a reporter, listening to parents, talking about their schools, listening to school board officials, try to do that. And the one thing that knits us all together is that we have this great expectation that the next generation is going to have a better life than we did. Um, that's jeopardized. For the first gen time in, a, in, uh, in our country's history, we really wonder, will this next generation have the opportunities we have? When I've seen that we can put 2,300 kids to work in a summer and get them college access, some of the kids with some of the greatest challenges we have, I know we can do that in Minnesota. And I think people in, in this area believe that. They want better transportation. They want better schools. They want lower property taxes. Uh, that's what I'm about. And uh, I think this state can do great things together. Do you anticipate uh, President Obama will look favorably at your candidacy? <laughs> He's been really generous. I was the first mayor to endorse him and uh, ran his campaign here. And uh, he was really wonderful when he came here to say some nice things about me. And he asked me about running for governor. And I really? told him about it. Just like but, Cheney asked. Uh, uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I don't think, I think he's got a lot on his mind right sure. now. And uh, you don't uh, envision any difficulty in working with the legislature going forward in these tough times? Well, you know, one of the things I found about the legislature is that it's filled with people with tremendous ideas. And I happen to, by the way, think Ron Case would be a great new state senator here from Eden Prairie. But um, we need to elect some uh, great people to the legislature, but send back some of the good ones. They, they're doing good work. They need a leader.